Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This is going to be an introductory tutorial using the software Reaper. It's a DAW, a digital audio workstation. It is an excellent program to use for recording, editing, and exporting various audio files and recordings of all different kinds, whether you're into music or spoken word or basically any kind of audio capture that needs to be edited and exported to a useful format. Reaper is awesome. It has a very, very useful free trial, which is full featured and potentially indefinite in time period. And speaking for myself personally, when the time came and I had the money to pay the $60 for the individual license, I was very pleased to do so. I've been using the program for a number of years now, and I would say that it, with confidence that it is fully featured to be a professional uh, DAW if I so desired. Um, and so I've got a lot of confidence in it, but it's also pretty user friendly. So if you're new, um, buckle in and let's get started. So um, I am assuming nothing that you, this is the first time you've downloaded Reaper and you have never used any software like this before. My goal is to try to give you an introduction to some of the most important and most used features. Uh, realize that Reaper is pretty complex to, if you use it to its fullest extent, but I'm just going to try to get you up and running and then I will give you some advanced topics to look into in other videos or other places. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first things first, you've downloaded Reaper and you want to capture a recording. Well, you have to have some sort of hardware to interface with your computer to allow you to do so. And so typically that means you maybe have some kind of microphone or maybe an instrument that will need to plug into what is called a USB audio interface. That is probably the most common and most popular and what I personally would recommend as far as the hardware you need to get up and running. I have a Focusrite 2i2, but there are a whole bunch of other interfaces that will work. Um, do some other searching on the topic of audio interface, and you will get some answers. But um, So let's say you're plugging into your audio interface. Uh, the first thing you need to do is to get Reaper to recognize what you are using. So what you need to do is go up here at the top to Options, and then Preferences. And then you need to go to device under audio device. And then here where it says audio system, uh, you have a variety of different audio systems. This is depending on the type of driver and hardware setup you are using. Uh, I think ASIO is the most common and popular that is used with all the USB audio interfaces that I have personally ever used. Um, now, next, you need to make sure that you download and install the driver for your interface. And if you have done that correctly, it will appear in this drop down menu here. If you have not done that correctly or you don't see that here, you need to go back and you need to try to download, do a Google search for your device's audio driver. Try installing that and restarting your computer and then come back to this step. Alternatively, if you can't seem to get that to work, try Googling this ASIO for all. Uh, that is a kind of a generic ASIO USB interface driver that often works pretty well. And um, give that a shot. That might um, help you get up and running. But this is going to require some outside Googling. But make sure you get your driver installed correctly. And then you can configure inputs. I just want to enable those inputs. Um, input 1, input 2. That's, that's all my interface uses. And that's pretty much all you need to do at this point. And go ahead and hit Apply and OK. So now... Um, this is kind of where you are at, and I just kind of want to run through some of the different things that you can see. Um, you've got some gray space over here and over here. These, this is a duplicate in the default window. Uh, so if I double click in this area, this creates what is called a track. Adding a new track is one of the core features of Reaper. Um, it's really where you do a lot of different things. You can double click in one of these different spaces. Um, you could also choose to right click and hit click on this insert new track or you could press Control T on your keyboard or you could go up to track and hit insert new track all of those will make all of these beautiful tracks um, a track is pretty foundational and you need to have a track in order to do anything so we've got our fancy new track here now this space over here is kind of the timeline where as you record something whatever you capture is going to be depicted on here Across the top, you see a time window. This is measured in seconds or bars. Um, it, it, it's kind of delimited in bars. Um, now, the time period that you can see here, there's three seconds, six seconds, 
Um, that's a one way to measure it. But then also Reaper has the ability to quantize or to um, sync with the with your music. And that is kind of connected right down here. So you can see I'm in 6.8. We can change that to 4.4 4 if you wish. We can also change the BPM. Let's just do 120. Oh, not 960. And then um, up here you've got the metronome, which gives you that little click that um, if you just press space, that'll play the through and that'll give you a click track. And so you, that's a really nice way to set the tempo of your song. And then you can see it actually breaks this into bars. So we've got, because we're in 4-4, four, four, that's going to be depicted here. So there's 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, you know, etc., etc. if you know anything about counting music. If we change this to 3-4, you can see that changes the number of beats, bars we have. There's 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 3, and so on. So that's a nice thing that you can do. You don't have to. You can turn the metronome off. And you can uh, just not mess with this at all and just carry on and not concern yourself with the tempo if you don't want to. But it's a nice feature to have if you want it. All right, so let's come back and look at our little track here again. I want to explain what some of these different buttons mean up here on the track as well as down here kind of in this master area. Um, first of all, you can, this area, you can name the track. So I just double clicked there and I can just call it track one. Then you've got a volume control right here for that track. And you can see down at the bottom left right here, it's doing the same thing. And and so when I say this is a duplicate, it, this, this track here is the same as this track here. It's just a different way of looking at it. Um, you also have a pan control. You can hard pan left, right, or center. You've got mute, which is handy to, to shut off the volume for that specific track. You also have S for solo. Solo means that all other tracks will be temporarily muted and you can just listen to that track. Next we have effects. So this is going to mostly be our like VST plugins or any other kind of things uh, to affect the track, which we'll come back to later. Uh, this is an important button right here. This is the record monitoring. Um, if you were to p enable this, then you should be able to hear whatever that track is going to sound like actively as you play into it. So we'll come back to that more later, but if you, if you don't hear anything and you want to hear what's going on during that track, you need to enable monitoring with that button. And then this menu here helps you choose the input. So this is linking with your audio interface, right? You know, so if you've got an input, mono input, maybe you're just plugging in a guitar or a single microphone on, into input one on your device, well, then this is where you select it. Or let's say um, one of the things I will do pretty frequently is I'll have input one on here, and I'll create a second track, and I'll have input two on here. So now both of the inputs on my audio interface will be enabled. I can call this one track two, and all the same controls will apply. So some pretty handy stuff, and you can do some more complicated things, but we're just going to stick with that for now. So we've got our two tracks ready to go. Now, let's say you want to begin recording. So uh, what you first need to do is choose which tracks you are going to record onto, and that is called arming. So if you go to this little red button here on the track, this arms or if you click again, disarms, right? So if it's active, you can actually see my voice is coming through on here on these yellow marks. So that means that this is ready to go. Um, and so this, whatever I record into input one will be uh, captured on this track. Likewise, here on input two, I currently have a guitar cable that is not plugged in, which is why you see a static there. It's just making a buzzing sound. Um, and so if I were to record now, both of the tracks in my audio interface are going to be at, captured onto these two tracks. Um, so let's just say we want to do track one, and we're ready to go. Then you go down here to this is the master section to kind of control where you're at in the timeline. You would hit this red button, and now you can see my voice is actively recording onto our timeline. And then let's say I want to be all done, I can just click stop. Um, you also could play in, here's our play, and here's our pause. Uh, you can also use this to go back to the beginning, play again, go back to the beginning. Um, very, very good there. Easy stuff as far as starting, stopping, and all the works. 
Um, so let's say I'm done with that, right? I want to keep that. I'm going to call that vocal. Now let's say I've got, um, I can get rid of this track. I'm going to make a new, so all I did there is I, you can see whichever one is highlighted there is in a lighter color, and I just hit the delete key on my keyboard to get rid of it. I'm going to double click, add a new track. I'm going to arm it for recording, and I'm going to call this guitar. Now let's say I have a guitar that I plug into input one on my interface. You can see input one is selected. Now all I do is just hit record, and I can play my guitar track, and it will be on this second track. So now I've got two tracks. I can do whatever I want to them, and um, pretty much ready to go. So um, now let's say you've done some experimenting and you've got some tracks recorded. <coughs> now let's talk a little bit about how you want to edit or manipulate those tracks. Um, so Reaper is very powerful in this regard. This is one of the main reasons why you would want to use Reaper. So first and foremost, um, you know, you can use these plus and minus buttons here to resize the tracks in such a way that they might more, you know, I'm talking over here, you know, you've got your horizontal axis, zoom out, zoom in, your vertical axis to zoom out or zoom in. It's just a nice way to help organize things. Um, now again, we have these bars here, and I can use my mouse to click into the fields and select wherever I want that to actively be. Now up here, we've got snap enabled, and snap means that it's going to, so if I click in here, it's not like halfway through, it doesn't actually do anything because it is snapping to the bars of the track. And that also means like if I click and hold, I can drag. And you can see how it's being s snapped correctly wherever I want it to be. Now there may also be situations where you don't actually want that. So if you turn this snap off, now you can see I can move it freely and uh, it will not automatically gravitate towards those bars the edges of those bars. Uh, so it's a nice tool to have both ways. Uh, some other little shortcuts that I use pretty frequently. Um, sometimes you want to split things. So if you put your, your click here, you put your cursor there, if you go ahead and click the S key, now you've split your tracks into two, which is really handy. You can also choose to change the volume of that specific part. Now this is not the same as changing this volume of the whole track. What I'm doing here is I'm changing the actual volume of this specific item within the track. Uh, so now this section is going to be, what, about 3.49 decibels louder, and then both will be governed by whatever changes I make here. So you're making volume changes within the track itself. Uh. All right, so now that we have captured some of our audio, maybe have organized it, we've got everything set up properly, would not be correct to make a video on a DAW without talking about editing your audio using VST plugins. Uh, this is probably one of the biggest uh, advantages to using a DAW over something like Audacity, um, just the flexibility and power that you get with using VST plugins is really strong and it is really cool and Reaper does plug VST plugins very well. I've said it before, this FX window, this is where you manage all of your plugins. Now VSTs are just one type of plugin, you also have many others. Um, now if you're brand new, you're probably not going to have as many plugins as I do. I've downloaded a lot of these or purchased some of them. And um, I do kind of like to kind of so, to mess around with free plugins. You can do Google searching for a lot of them, and you will find a lot of choices. Um, you may not have all these folders, but what I want to focus you towards is the Kakos folder. This is the company that makes Reaper, and they have included some default plugins that are actually all around very excellent, and I would highly recommend that you get used to using them. Specifically, the specifically the compressor EQ. Uh, the delay, the pitch shifter, the reverb, the tuning, um, the sampler is really good. And the synth, I, I use a lot of these plugins very frequently. You know, specifically about this EQ, it's very simple, but it's also very powerful. And, um, you know, personally, I think you may use other plugins for a set of preference. But as far as features go, these plugins are excellent 
and they will get you a long ways. And so let's just talk briefly about this. This is a topic where you should do in-depth looking on your own past this, but we'll just briefly get into this. So again, if I click on this green effects window, this is only applied to this specific track that I've got um, or any subtracks that are in underneath the parent folder, but that's a kind of a more advanced feature as well. But the, you know, if I make a new track, whatever I'm doing on this green effects window with track one will not be applied to track two unless I add it. So this is the kind of the effects master window. And um, it, you can see I can put a list of different plugins here. Let's maybe do a delay. Let's add a compressor. Uh, let's put the compressor first. And then let's add a reverb. Uh, so these, this is my chain of plugins, and it goes from top to bottom. The signal flows through them one at a time into the other. And you, you can use this checkbox to enable or disable those specific plugins. You can click on the plugin name to pull up the window to edit it. Some plugins pop out in their own window, and other times they stay in. But uh, this gives you a lot of flexibility to edit your signal, and I'd highly recommend you look into VST plugins at some point in time. All right, so now that we've talked a bit about editing, uh, let's talk about finalizing and exporting your track. This is the best part. You're all done. You want to share it with somebody. Let's show you how to do that. So you go to File and then hit Render. And then this is your Render menu. You could do the Master Mix. That's fine. Entire project is just going to do everything that you have done. Um, then if we go to Browse, this is going to be the computer folder that the file is going to be placed in. You can name it. We'll call it uh, the Testerino 1. You can change the sample rate. Now, I commonly, most commonly is used is 44.1 or 48. And what I recommend is that you match this with whatever your audio interface driver is set to use. So mine is set to 48, and so I'm going to keep it at that. I like to do stereo. I like to bump this up to extreme high quality because um, I've, I like to have quality and I don't mind if I have large files. I don't really care about compressing. I want it to be full of quality. Uh, for audio output format, I use WAV because uh, that's what my other programs use, but you can also do MP3 or FLAC or whatever you like. And then you hit render and that's it. Uh, so now you can go and share your wonderful music with the world. So. Anyways, that's going to wrap up my beginner's tutorial. Like I said, Reaper is a very complicated, complex program. There is much more you can do, so please dive deeper into some of these topics. But hopefully you are up and running and able to make some of your own music and share it. Please let me know your thoughts and comments down below, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.